So we got a lot of questions about screaming and I'm really happy to talk about this because it is something that I've noticed that people don't seem to understand um, the way that I feel like I understand it. Um, you know, there's a purpose behind screaming whenever I would do it in Flyleaf. It had to be um, for specific effect, a specific um, communication. Um, it is a way to communicate through music that is very specific and has a important purpose. So, um, you know, a lot of times you, you get this question of why do you scream? And that's a good question. And if you want to know how to scream, I think you should ask why do you scream first? So, um, so for me, um, the first time I heard screaming metal in music, I thought this is trash. It's not real music and why would anybody do that? Uh, my brother brought home a Pantera CD and I was making fun of him for it for a while until um, I picked up the lyric booklet to uh, the Pantera CD and started to read what they were actually screaming about and it made complete sense um, that they would scream those words. There was such anger, there was a demand for justice, um, there was rage and abuse and you could tell that the sound that was coming out of the music went perfectly along with the message um, in the songs. Um, so I think that was the best way to communicate those lyrics for them. I'm not endorsing Pantera. That music actually kind of tore up my soul a little bit. I think uh, music has a power um, to touch our souls in a way that um, we don't always recognize, especially when we're younger. And for me, Pantera was, um, it really did touch my soul in a way that made me a lot more violent than I probably would have been had I not listened to that consistently. So not endorsing Pantera, I'm just using it as an example for a really great reason um, behind why they're screaming. The first time I understood it was through their music. So the thing is that with Flyleaf, when I would sing in the in the past, um, when I would sing lyrics that needed screaming, I would, you know, it would have to be either for, you know, extreme anger, frustration, um, and demand for justice. I love those. Um, you know, screaming at the devil is a good one. Uh, just um, this this idea that some lyrics need to be screamed in order for you to get them out of your soul appropriately. Like at the end of Sorrow, Sorrow is particularly about depression. And the song Sorrow, um, when we played the live version of Sorrow, you screamed, I screamed in the end, joy will come. And the reason why I screamed that is because it was me um, declaring with all my might the truth over my feelings because my feelings were this is going to be forever my feelings were sorrow sorrow but the truth was joy will come and so so I had to scream that to myself with all my heart and also to others maybe in the audience that were dealing with that but first and foremost it was for me to tell my heart the truth because your heart sometimes lies to you and um yeah, being honest about your feelings doesn't always mean you're telling the truth. And the truth is joy will come. And so that's why I screamed that line. It's really important for me in battling that demon, those demons in me of depression. So um, that's just an example of, of why you would use the, why, why I would scream. Um, everybody screams for different reasons, I guess. And everybody sings for different reasons and listens to music for different reasons. And, you know, I think about that that line in Kesha song that says, uh, why is it, why you gotta be so serious? You're making my brain delirious. And you know, I guess, I guess that there are times where we just need to turn our brains off and, you know, and just have fun. And, and there's definitely moments for that because life is so hard and so heavy. And, um, but there's also moments where life is so heavy and so hard that we need to face things and figure out how to overcome them not just distract ourselves from them and that a lot of the music that that I write actually 
addresses those things. So that's where the screaming comes in a lot of times. So with all that said, um, there's also uh, a time where I was on tour with a band whose lead singer, the band that we were touring with, their lead singer screamed and I lost my voice on tour and he was teaching me how to, how to scream properly and he recommended a video called The Zen of Screaming and I watched it and um, it taught me a lot of techniques that were really great but the hard one for me because the way I would always scream was full voice, full passion you know and it was a very expensive thing to do on your voice it was just if you did that every night like I did you would wear yourself out and I did it for years that way um, so it was good to hear that you can actually scream quietly into a microphone with your hands cupped over the microphone and it sounds ten times louder and more fierce to the audience if your sound guy is doing a good job um, which of course our sound guy was the best ever um, and you can cup the microphone and get it to sound ten times louder and fiercer with a quiet scream that doesn't hurt your voice at all and so I'm going to teach you that one first because it's easy and because um, the next one is expensive like I said but um, the what I would call the fake scream which is not a really good term for it because it actually sounds bigger when you're doing it in a microphone it's something you really need to practice and play with with a microphone so you can get used to how it feels um, it's kind of like making a pterodactyl noise in the in the back of your mouth um, it doesn't touch your throat really that much at all it's more like in the back of your mouth and it's kind of like when you're getting low when you're talking low and you kind of start to make that pterodactyl noise <laughs> it's like uh, like this and it sounds silly kind of when you're just doing it out in the open like rah, rah, rah. but when you cup your hands over your mouth it sounds a lot bigger especially when you're using a microphone it's like rah. and then depending on how you shape your mouth will depend on the note the tone and the notes that you can hit so if your mouth is closed um, if your if your lips come closer together and your mouth gets open um, inside it's deeper and if you open your mouth up high it get the up wide the note gets higher so um, so then you just play with that and um, and it's um, you know that's just my that's just my little bit about it, but that video was end up screaming really gets into the, the, the techniques and the depth of all that. And the other way um, is a full voice scream, and it's like I said, really expensive, but what you wanna do, if you, if you do feel like you need to do that scream, which I did a lot, because it's your whole heart, um, is, um, you open up as wide as you can with your breath as much as you can push with your breath as much use as much breath and open your throat as wide as you can and that would be this one and it's kind of like when you're frustrated and you say Hah! except you push really hard from there and you say <laughs> it's funny doing that inside with without a microphone but that's the idea is that you're just and um, just try to make a word out of that. Um, so example from the song Swept Away, in the beginning, um, I'm actually, you know, singing, sing, screaming the word out, 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 now, 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 now. And I scream that in my, fa in my, um, the easy scream, the one that's not hard on your voice. And I cup the microphone and I say, out, out. like that <laughs> and then when I sing um, joy, joy will come at the end of sorrow I would do it more in a full voice obviously um, if I had a voice to sing with and it would be it would be that joy will come 
with my whole my whole heart so <laughs> there you go so those are the different two different ways that I scream and the first one I taught is the one that's easiest and it does kind of feel like if you've been used to the full scream it does feel like you're cheating it's hard to get your passion behind it but the great thing about learning to do things well is you can learn them in practice to the point where you just have a muscle memory and that way when you get to where you you automatically go there with your muscle memory then um, then you can actually forget about what you're doing and just do it with your heart and then put your heart behind it and also trusting in your sound guy to make you sound the best out there so that's the the idea about behind screaming so hope you guys uh, take care of your voices and thanks for asking that awesome question